balanced, committed. This is the CBC Evening News. And a very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC Evening News. Well, tragedy struck in the Western community this morning. CBC understands a man identified as Leroy Thompson died after he was struck by a boat while spearfishing off Thunder Bay in Lower Carlton in St. James. The former Dublin Road resident and part-time fisherman is said to be in his 60s. Relatives and friends spoke glowingly of Mr. Thompson, who was a security guard at the Palmetto Street Market. All like now, I'm still feeling feeling the pain from it, like if he was one of my children. Because I know Leroy for a lot of years, even before I moved down here in Western, I used to live in the garden first. And I didn't know Leroy, I know his wife, and I know his two kids, Tommy and Lara. And to me, he was a nice fella. Where we were our community spirited people, we grew up in this neighborhood as like I was a I was a kid and he looked out for me. Basically, he was a man that spent quality time at sea. He re actually raised his family through from the sea, even from the sea, working in the Ministry of Government in the agriculture around the fishery markets. He had his own fish boats and, you know, they've been a tough time for them too and we were always like to be there for each other. He was a good person to me, he was a my good friend. And we thought like we shot there by, by Jamin, by Jamin shot. Me and he and some more other guys. And we talked about what can happen tomorrow, whatever, and think. Well, the 40-year-old root taxi driver who was involved in Tuesday's near-fatal accident has been remanded to Her Majesty's Prison at Dodds. Matthew Recorder Daniel of Licorice Village, Mylord Hill, St. Michael, appeared in the District C Traffic Court today, accused of committing four traffic offences. He was not required to plead to charges of furious driving, driving in a manner dangerous to the public, driving without due care and attention, and driving without reasonable consideration for other road users. He is represented by lawyer Angela Mitchell Gittings and is to reappear in court on July the 9th. 21 mostly Springer school children were injured in that accident. 14-year-old Zakia DeFreitas' forearm was severed in that accident and she had to be rushed to surgery. Well, junior doctors at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital are the latest set of public servants agitating for better working conditions. And they've given the hospital's management until the end of the week in one instance to start fixing the problems there. Acting Assistant General Secretary at the National Union of Public Workers, Wayne Waldron, says the doctors are particularly annoyed because they've documented and met with management on the issues and had assurances that they would be addressed. Two of the major issues related to the physical working conditions, which include the air condition system, which has been malfunctioning since last year, September 2014. And then there's a lot of proper ventilation in the doctor's um, quarters. Also, the issue of lack of base amenities such as hot water is also an issue. This is adversely impacting on the working condition. We will have communicated management by correspondence in February and in February and March to have these situations addressed. We subsequently had a meeting on April the 29th with QEH management. Well, Mr. Waldron says the doctors are concerned about patient care and as a result have endured the poor conditions for too long. In the meantime, the hospital's management has responded, giving the assurance that the air conditioning will be repaired and installed by tomorrow. It says that the other issue of the availability of hot water has already been fixed. We'll have more news in just a moment, but first we want to get your take on this question. Do you think there is a need for a higher level of screening for PSV operators? You can text yes or no to short code 8111 and we'll have the results for you at the end of our news. Dear Clark, I've made a fascinating discovery. The Institutional Water Cooler. Its gravitational pull sucks people from their workstations at the busiest times of day to stand around it and chat about emerging global trends like, will pink be in fashion next season? <laughs> Meanwhile, the world slows to a stop as it waits in line to be served. I don't see that trend at Globe Finance. Globe Finance. Think outside the bank when it comes to their financial service. 
Slow is out. Swift is in. further with Saul. At Line, we don't need any tricks or gimmicks. We treat all our prepaid customers like MVPs. MVP means maximum value per person, maximum respect. Subscribe to any one gig 30 day data plan and enjoy a reduced calling rate of just 49 cents to any network, any landline, any time. With Line, you pay just 49 cents and call any phone in Barbados, so you won't have to top up as often. Put data on your phone and keep your money in your pocket with Lime MVP. Contact Evolution 4.0. Beautiful to see. Powered by Barbados Yellow Pages and proudly sponsored by 98.1 The One. Education Minister Ronald Jones says the ministry does not plan to be burdened by undue requests for transfers this year. He made the comments following the release of the 11 plus results to schools across Barbados. This burden, which descends upon the ministry, would not be a burden which we intend to tolerate this year. Um, choices are made by parents in their discussion, and based on their performance, based on their requests, uh, it is satisfied generally. Sometimes you might not get your first choice, second, or third choice. You might get your fourth choice, and that is because of how the choices were made. Mr. Jones says in another two years, students will be receiving a mark for their essays instead. He believes this will force schools to further tighten up on oral discussions with students instilling confidence in their ability to write and express themselves. As we approach um, 2017, we are so from now that you will be seeing a mark rather than just a simple grade for your essay composition writing so that you get a better understanding um, of what is not going to affect how students are transferred but it gives you a better picture and tonight we feature more of the top 10 performers in the 2015 common entrance examination lisa broom tells us more it was congratulations all around for Adam Monroe over at the Trinity Primary School. The sports lover will attend Queen's College come September, and though confident that he would have done very well, he didn't expect to be in the top ten. I was still, like, kind of bright, but my parents wanted me to take extra lessons just so I would be well prepared for the exam. His father, Marlon, said there was no real secret to Adam's success, but highlighted the importance of maintaining a balance. There's a, a very active balance, you know. Um, there was always an active study program, but apart from that, he was always involved in sports. You know, so we always ensured that it was a balance in his whole academic career. At Blackman and Gollop Primary, the atmosphere was festive as students congratulated each other. Kimani Archer, also a top 10 performer, will be attending Queen's College as well. And she credits her success to the dedication of teachers. This worked on our weak areas, and if we had like, if we had problems in section three, section one, section two, they would go through the section with us. When Michael Williams of the People's Cathedral Primary enters Harrison College in September, he will join his sister Brianna, who was the island's top student in 2013. 
With her success in mind, Micah knew he would perform well, describing his family as one that focuses on excellence. I just sacrifice all video game time. Every weekend I just worked with my mother one-on-one -on -one, and every evening when I came home I did a lot of work. And his parents, Paul and Kavita Williams, said the family's faith in God was the determining factor. All the honor and the glory for the strength and as his grandfather, the late Reverend Holmes Williams, would always tell him and his sisters, thank God first for your brain for the brain and then the ability to retain. So yes, we do thank God for his strength, for the brain and for every aspect of favor. Now in all the excitement at St. Angela's School, there was one little girl who could easily have been missed. 10-year-old Zan Valer was among the nine early sitters in this year's exam. She earned a place at the St. Michael's School. Now, Zan is clearly very shy, but her mother, Renata, was elated. As a result of her consistent grades over the last couple of years, she was allowed to do it. Um, she has passed for her first choice, which was St. Michael's School. And um, honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of emotions that, as, as a parent, I did not expect to feel. Um, but it's, it is relief. Renata is a bit concerned because of Zan's age, but she's confident she will fit in just fine. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Thank you, Lisa. We'll still to come a look at some of the stories making headlines across our region. But first, a reminder that we want to hear from you on this question. Do you think there is a need for a higher level of screening for PSV operators? You can text 